Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Camel. And this is Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Cheers, George. Cheers. It's like we're back in Christmas. Oh, that's <gasps> nice. That's wonderful. That's actually lovely. That's wonderful. What a great mock Well, this is the show where two friends who happen to be money experts talk about what you're talking about. So everything from pop culture, current events, and money. And for today's episode, Rachel, we thought we'd take a crack at a social media trend that we saw at the beginning of the year, and we loved it. Yeah, this was a, this was a good one. This will, uh, you know, make you laugh, make you cry maybe a little bit. I don't who know. Cried? Did you cry? I don't know. But it's the, um, of course trends so it's a little bit of a you know it's a financial spin on the of course trend yeah yeah we're gonna and yeah, if you're we're unaware gonna we're gonna fill you in if you're not yeah if you don't know this trend of of course don't worry and we're we also got you. we're gonna throw in some other fun stuff like the casual flex we hear entry-level plumbers have uh the celebrity that pampers their dogs after they poop and no it's not me <laughs> and some common traits that our favorite millionaire share that's right but what are we sipping on today george today we have a Roseberry mule mocktail. Mm. Why isn't it raspberry? I don't know. I don't know what a roseberry is. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. find out. If we'll you listen to the is. end, we'll give you our rating, roseberry. reveal the cost per glass, and the recipe at the end of the episode. Yeah. And, you know, we'll admit that we're a little late to this trends. Yeah. Uh, but we kind of like that we're about the ourselves. church in a small town. Like, we got the drum set, but it took a while. Yeah, just a we little bit. We got the contemporary, <laughs> the contemporary service came there. a little too late. We're getting there. All the young folk left. <laughs> the trend's been out for a while, but here's George and me. It's like you on Instagram Reels, and you're like, oh my gosh, you have to see this. I'm like, I saw it on TikTok when it came out a month ago. So you saw this trend six months ago, but you you did not share that. I was gatekeeping. <laughs> okay. As Gen Z oh says. My, yeah. yeah. Okay. So this was being called the of course trend on social media, and you'll recognize it because it starts with this sentence structure. We're blank. Of course we're going to blank. So we found some examples, and we'll give some uh, shout-outs to the creators in the description below. Like, we're teachers. Of course we're going to wear holiday earrings, you know. That's a good everyone, one. Yeah. Okay, that one is giving Miss Frizzle. Not yeah, mad about or, it. Or, I'm a plumber. Of course I make more than your honors college student. Shade hath been thrown. That is true. But that's a true one. Here's the fun fact for this one. According to ZipRecruiter, the average entry-level plumber in the U.S. makes 30 bucks an hour, which puts you around 65 grand a year. That's impressive. Doing good. Yeah, here's one of my favorites, because I could probably bleed into this category a little bit. You're not Gen X, are you? Uh, no, but sometimes in spirit. People <laughs> think you are, because you're so mature and wise. <laughs> so behind on so many things. Uh, we're Gen X. Of course, we open up the Safari app and type in YouTube. <laughs> oh my gosh. That one drives me crazy. <laughs> so funny. So good. So That's yeah, it's, one of my It's favorites. a stereotypical trend going on and there's, there's some good stuff there, George. Yeah. Here's one, Rachel. I'm from the Midwest. Of course, I'm going to be like, oh, just going to squeeze right past you. <laughs> If I need to get by, that's what you do in the Midwest. That's good. That's, that's a good, good. one. Um, here's one. I'm a budget girly. Of course, I have a whole freezer full of bulk items. That's a Costco girly right there. That's a Costco I know girly. one when I see one, a Kirkland Queen, as we call that's them. That's right. <laughs> and here's one. We're TikTok dermatologists. Of course, we're going to film an entire skincare routine on an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with people? That's so have funny. Have we lost class? I'm Mariah Carey. Of course, my puppies get pampered after they poop. <gasps> that Mariah one's real. Mariah or George. <laughs> a few of Mariah's many Jack Russell Terriers are getting a little massage in an outdoor lounge chair. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Maybe, God you know bless. what? I've been known to do that to my dogs. I just don't film it. You yes. know what I mean? Do you, <laughs> do you ever massage your camera. dog? No. <laughs> never? No. You never just think once, like, it feels good for us. Like, I bet it feels good for them. No. Here's what I've realized about myself, George. I like dogs. You're not a dog person. I'm not a dog person. So we just mm. actually took our dog on a trip. To the farm? Oh. And, nope. Oh. Mm -hmm. Man, I feel like I'm going to be judged by this. You took the dog to Cabo. And we had some friends. I'm going to call them out. The Breelands. And both of them were just like... Loving on the dog. Oh my God. Well, they're dog oh my God. people. That's it. That's what I'm saying. And I watched them. I thought, I just don't think I'm you. Like, I like I just... <laughs> it's not... My my husband is. Winston is a massive dog person, which is why He's we, like the Caesar Milan of the South. He the loves... Man. He loves a dog. And I just... Y'all, I'm not kidding. It's just... Well, you know. came over to our house. Our dogs are jumping on you, and you're like, <laughs> no. you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you're fine with it, but you're not excited I about can, it. I can handle the chaos of a dog. They just don't bring me the level of, like, 
uh, joy that they do. Other people. I don't know. That's But fair. you're a dog person. When people are like, do you have any hobbies? I'm like, uh, I like to stay home with my dogs. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's me. Like, that's not me. Yeah. But I'm not a dog person. I like my dogs. It's like being like, I like my baby. I don't like other people's babies. babies. Yeah, I don't there's like a babies. difference. I like my baby. Yeah, I like I don't beautiful know. I babies. Just, and I wish I was because there's something like really maternal and like sweet and like oh my gosh, like let me just talk to your dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's I don't fair. Care. No, it's fine. Rachel's I'll go an hang with outdoor hair. dog type of person. I just yeah, I'm like I don't know. I'm a meh on a dog. I've decided. Okay. I think I would always have one, but I think I would take years of breaks between. Years of breaks. Mm-hmm. Wow, what a level of commitment that is. <laughs> okay. Anyways. All right. I don't know let's how we got let's up on help that, them Mariah. understand. Uh, let's do this trend together to help people understand. Okay. What are we? Okay, that's good. We're. Uh, gosh, we could do like 90s sitcoms. We're 90s, we're 90s kids. We're 90s kids. We could do that. Well, I think the one we want to focus on today, Rachel, is we're Baby Steps Millionaires. Of course we. Oh, well, that's good. Fill in the blank. Okay. Okay. That's fair. That's what this is focused okay. on. So, what does Baby Steps Millionaires mean to you as a non dog lover? As a <laughs> <laughs> I do love dogs. Um, yeah. So, if your net worth is a million dollars or more, meaning what you own minus what you owe, and that's what it is. So, for a and lot of people, it's for their- Baby Steps Millionaires, it's a slight twist. It's for those that have followed the Ramsey Baby Steps. Sure. Which means they got out of debt yeah, and they, they stayed our out of plan debt. And they did it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, we both are. Winston and I have been doing this for 12 years, George. Wow. Well, I, I mean, no, no, no. Yeah, I'd say going on 13, 14. Like intentionally. Because we, we you've been doing it your whole life. Yeah. We weren't like really like, oh my gosh, let's get really intentional like our first year. Until adulthood and having jobs and all yeah, that. I yeah, I think yeah. it gets real. So it took a little bit. But yeah, we are. And I and I always will f- for sure admit, like I get it. I'm Dave Ramsey's daughter. I had a leg up. I get it. Because I had him telling me, you got to work to make money. You're on commission. We're going to set up. Here's a mutual fund. 12-year-old Rachel. Like here's like, like I get it. Like I, like I was... A lot of knowledge, a lot of opportunity, right? Yeah. Plugged in to Ramsey, and he did a lot of work before I got here, and I was able to help join. So, well, let me I get call it. Out. I, I, I get you it. You could have like prodigal daughtered and just been like, "I'm gonna go." You don't tell me. You know what I mean? But you actually have followed these principles. Like you sure, budget every we month. Do it. Yeah, and you guys we stay out stuff. of debt, and so for sure, I applaud you guys yes. uh, Thanks, for working George. your tails off. This is what I like to say: the door was opened. But I had to choose to walk through. <laughs> That's beautiful. I love that. <laughs> is that from That's the movie <laughs> Eat, Pray, Love? Like, where'd you pull that I quote know. from? The blind side? Where'd that because come from? Because there's a level that I was like. <laughs> it's Notting really Hill. beautiful. The Julia, Ro- oh, Julia Roberts. No, you know, well, I've been here for 10 years. So I've seen your growth, you know, oh, as thanks, a person, George. professionally, personally. I that. I try to work. We work in hard. Marriage. In our own self. Yes. In our own dignity. The Cruz family. We're doing great. We're we're baby steps millionaires because of our own rights, but that's not without acknowledging. Yeah. Hey Dave. Well, I want to say to people who are like, well, it's easy for them to say, like, I think we should but all be about you, creating our own privilege for our kids. Like, isn't that what you want for your kids? Sure. When you really think about what yeah. privilege is, like With their own dignity and being able to like we just say we want a better life for our kids than we had. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's what being a baby steps millionaire is all about. It's mm-hmm. the earlier you can get there, the faster and more you can do while you're here on earth to create that impact and leave sure. that legacy. And on our end, it's, it takes work to do it, and you appreciate it more when you're the one actually doing it, right? Hundred percent. So, yeah. so there's a level I, of that. I come from an immigrant family. My wife and I worked hard to get to where we are to become baby steps millionaires, and it's a simple definition. I don't make a million dollars. It's just what you own minus what you owe yeah. equals a million dollars or more. And we don't owe anything. We don't have any payments. And so uh, that's a huge part. So here's the following things that are out, Rachel, in this elite group of Baby Steps Millionaires. Okay. Inheritance, lottery winners, trust fund babies, and leveraging debt. It's out. Okay. I'm just calling it. Yeah. We're not doing it in 2024. And when we said the Baby Steps, you guys, if you haven't been following or know the Ramsey plan, Baby Step 1 is get $1,000 saved. Baby step two, get out of debt, everything but your house. Baby step three, a fully funded emergency fund, three to six months of expenses. Then baby step four, you're going to fund 15% of your income into retirement. Baby step five, save for kids' college. Baby step six, pay the house off early. And baby step seven, build wealth and give. And that's where we are. And it's a good time. So what's in, Rachel? Cars bought with cash, paid in full mortgages, intentional savings. That's what this is all about. Yeah, absolutely. So if if people want a deeper dive on this, we covered it in depth on a juicy episode titled How to Start Becoming a Millionaire in 2024. Yep. 
It was a widely received episode. People loved it. <laughs> they came in droves. They left comments. And that dropped on January 4th. So we'll put a link in the description to check that out. Maybe it'll pop up on your YouTube feed now. But that's a great resource for people to go watch. Yes. If they want more tactical steps here. For sure. Okay, so George, let's uh, let's be part of the trend. You ready? I hope I can be so, part of the trend. Uh, It'll we're be a baby, first. We're baby steps millionaires. Of course we tell people that a budget is the answer to all their problems. <laughs> Man, that is such a Rachel statement if I've ever heard it one. It is so true, though. All the it budget. Is. I'm telling you, it is like, it is everything. It's well, everything. We know that people make great money out there, and they're still wondering where their money's going, and they're still feeling broke. And a budget just helps you put an intentional spending plan in you place. You know, it's kind of one of those things, it's like a slap on the face, but a arm... A arm around the shoulder. Is that a southern I don't know. saying? <laughs> it just feels like, like a so. slap in the face is worth two in the bush. That's what they say. Because <laughs> the first time you do it, you're like, holy crap, we spent what on what? Yeah. How many, whatever, Amazon or out to eat? Like you start to actually see the reality of where your paycheck's going. And it kind of is a little bit. It can be a, oh, golly. But then it's a it's a warm hug, a warm side hug mm, to say you've got on this. On a cold winter's day. Yeah. And then you can be like, okay, now I know where my paycheck is. What do I do with it? Now I get to decide proactively instead of reactively. Well, you're pre-deciding how you're going to spend your paycheck. That's all yeah. it is. But people, you know, if you get that lump in the throat, that pit in the stomach, ask yourself where's that coming from? Because really it's probably some – your conscience and your own healthy yeah, guilt going fair. like, maybe I need to actually pay attention instead of just complaining that I feel broke. Because mm -hmm. most people, when they put this plan on paper, at least it shows them reality. That's it too. Whether they're in the hole every month I or know. whether it's like, I should have lots of money left over. Where's it all going? Oh, I ate out like way too much this month and Uber eats my way yep. into all these payments. Hundreds of dollars. Yeah, totally. So, so the budget, it really is. It is a key point and I love every dollar. That's the app that I use. Yes, use it as same. Well. well, it used to be like you had to do pen and paper or like an Excel spreadsheet. And I love that my wife and I are signed into the same Every Dollar Budget app and we can both have transparency and accountability. Yep. And we just look at it before we go and make a spending And even on Baby decision. Step 7, Baby Steps Millionaires, yes. we still do a budget every single month. It's just less say, stressful it, now. There's can more I say margin. our Costco line item in Big. January, it went over. <gasps> and seeing red on Every Dollar, it just makes— It hurts your soul. It does. I'm like— Dad, gum it. <laughs> well, and for those that think like, well, budgets are for people who are, refuse to spend, you have Rachel spending and Winston spending. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And at this point, you're like, okay, if I choose to take some out of the savings, we can figure it out, right? Yes. I mean, you get to baby step seven. You have extra margin you that you're deciding enjoy, yeah, what to do with. Yeah, but you still want to at least be proactive and have a goal that you're shooting for. And it's not just this like nebulous, like, oh my gosh, we're going to just live our month. Good use of nebulous. You're welcome. That's the Roseberry <laughs> talking. <laughs> Very <important. laughs> Next one, Rachel. Ready? Yeah. We're Baby Steps millionaires. Of course we've never paid for a vacation with credit card points. <laughs> oh, so true. What would that even be like to have to wait to stack up enough points to then hopefully book the vacation that I could get with the point? It feels so stressful. I know. I, I told you about my New York vacation. Yes. I just booked it. And yeah. then the money came out of my bank. And then I went, okay. I know. For that trip. It's just an in-control thing. It's up to you, right? You're not worried about an industry or what you're doing yeah. to play this game. It's just well, level people freedom. think like, well, they secretly probably have credit cards, but they oh, just have to tell people not to use them. <laughs> I'm like, y'all, I literally, I don't have like, I show people my wallet to prove it to them. I'm like, do you I have a Rachel Cruz wallet? I can't <laughs> fit it. If I could fit a Rachel Cruz wallet in my skinny jeans, I would. Okay, thanks. I'm not Rachel's ready for that. Like, you know that Southern Texan like long wallet that you put in yeah. your back pocket. Yeah. I'm not there yet. You I do the magnetic iPhone wallet. But I truly, I have my license, my debit card, and then my work debit card. I think that's Good. a very simple way to live, and it's given yep. me a lot of peace and freedom when it comes to spending and more accountability. And guess what? I can never go into debt yeah, if I use a debit card. Yeah, just playing your own game, too. Like, that's my thing. Just live your own life. Yeah. Don't have to depend on all this And I do stuff. better research and find better deals when I'm using my own money versus the credit card company's blessing of points. Yeah, that's so right. So not worth it. All right, next. We're Baby Steps Millionaires. Of course, we scour the internet for the best deal, even though we budgeted full price for this. Enter your boy. George Camel. <laughs> oh, my enters. gosh. Welcome. Is there a greater dopamine rush? Like, when people are like, what are your hobbies? I'm like, I don't know, saving 15% on something that Hanging Rachel paid full price for? <laughs> I know. 
It's not even getting a deal. It's knowing that you didn't. Like, that's part of the win for me. This is where I slack, for sure. Like, I order Marco's pizza, and before we order, for 15 minutes, I'm searching for the promo code. But when I find that random 30% off promo code off the full menu price, I get that. I'm like, I get why people do drugs. I get This is what it must feel like. That rush, that high is what I chase every day. Just love it. I love the deal. And I can appreciate that. I'm not like, I'm not against that. I get it. Do you want the promo code or not? I just don't have the bandwidth or the energy to save $4. Well, I'm not going to tell you the Marco's promo code then. (laughs) Why would I tell you? Do you you? have a Papa John's promo code or a Jet's Pizza? I wouldn't darken the door of a Papa John's. (laughs) So no. George, it's actually really good. Do they have gluten free? That's my literal only question. Oh, that's a good point. Bougie, bougie George. Does anyone can they have gluten free pizza at Papa John's? Is it good? Yeah. I've never had gluten free pizza because I don't believe in that. But you said it. (laughs) (laughs) But it was so nonchalant while being condescending. (laughs) You're like, I'm a grown woman, so I don't wear capris. Uh, (laughs) But it's fine. Capris are oh in. Oh my gosh. Uh, it's TW30. Okay. TW30, you Rachel. You're all welcome. That's all it took. I don't order Marcos. Do they have wings? I don't know. Okay. Because <laughs> Jets has great wings. You went from Papa John's to Jets? You're a Jets woman now? Yeah, I'm both. <gasps> Papa's not going to be happy <laughs> about this. <laughs> Anyways, truthfully, I love doing the research. Yep. There's a great extension, browser extension or website. You can get it on your phone. It's called Honey. Again, not a sponsor, but I love using Honey to find promo codes automatically. So you don't have to do the research. I know. Just look it up. If you're checking out on, I don't know, J. Crew, yeah. C- it'll just show C- you, Senor. hey, there's a 25% <laughs> off promo code. We're going to try them all to test and them for you. And just see what happens. Thanks, So honey. it's worth a shot. All right, next, George. Uh, we're Baby Steps Millionaires. Of course, our credit scores are indeterminable. <laughs> If you ever said that so out loud, good. I would, I would, that's a punchable person. You know what I mean? Actually, it's pretty funny. Though. Of course, our credit scores are indeterminable. indeterminable. <laughs> we don't use credit. Yeah, what that means is it doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. If you can't determine the credit score, it's because there is it's no not credit zero. score. zero. People get that mistake a lot. Yeah, they think, well, Rachel, you have a terrible credit score. It's zero. Yeah. No, it's it not, just they falls don't, off the they face don't have of the earth. The, they don't have the mathematical equation to equate your credit score because there's no credit there so how does that happen it means you have no debt and no accounts open and you've gotten out of debt you've gotten out of debt you've closed all the accounts no credit lines it takes about 12-ish 9 to 18 months we hear a range Um, for yeah it just they can't when they pull it they're like we don't have any information to be able to calculate this credit score and the pushback I get on this especially is on housing and like well how do you buy a house without a credit score that's right and so I did this back in 2019 and I'm alive to tell the tale (laughs) okay (laughs) <laughs> Many people are like, how did you survive it? And so there's a process called manual underwriting, a no-score loan, yep. where a real person looks at your actual financial information and statements, your W-2s, your tax returns, all that, and they go, okay, this person has a low debt-to-income ratio, which for us was zero. We didn't have any debt, mm-hmm. which is what I recommend for all hopeful home buyers. And then we had the income to support the mortgage, and then we had utility bills and you know insurance Proof bills that we paid that you, in full. Yeah. That you pay every month or every quarter in full. So that's all it took to get a no-score loan, and we got a great rate. So I'm here to debunk the myth that you even need a credit score at all. I've rented cars. I've rented apartments, mm-hmm. rented hotels. You name it. I've lived Been my there, life without that. a score. It's amazing. It's really, like, not as big of a deal as people make it out to be. Yes. They They're like, there's well, so many hoops to jump through, Rachel. The world, and when you plug into any level of the financial world, the credit score is one of those points that they, like, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your credit score like? How do you, you know— it's a topic of conversation. Yes. And if you want more on this, I wrote a whole chapter on credit scores in my book, Breaking Free from Broke. Oh, yeah. And I love the feedback of people being like, I had no idea. And you gave me confidence to just live yeah. life without debt. So George, you can do your, it. Thanks for your gift. I'm blessed to be a blessing. <laughs> a blessing. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, next. We're Baby Steps Millionaires. Of course, we have absolutely no idea how much the stock market fluctuated today. Couldn't tell you. You know why, That's Rachel? That's a good one because. Because we have a long term perspective. Long term. Why check it every day when I'm not? This is retirement for me. Unnecessary. I'm not pulling this money out for a long time. Even when the news is like, and everyone's like, you know what this is like? We just keep on going, George. We just keep on moving. It's like cooking the Thanksgiving turkey and you're checking on it every three minutes. Yes. Like you're going to get salmonella, bro. (laughs) Like just leave it alone. Yeah. Just let it go. Just let it go. Set it and forget it. It's going to do. Or yeah. 
or boiling water. It's going to do what it's going to do. Because even when you look at the last five years, George, I'm like, what the market has done. It's like, been like, oh, no, not good. 2022. And then this year has been amazing. Great. Like, I mean, it's just, you got to, you just got to hold out, you guys. Well, this is out. one of my favorite quotes to help people when it comes to investing. Don't try to time the market. It's about time in the market. You like that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Wow, you really overdid the it's reaction beautiful. there. I don't think anyone bought it. You want to try it again? Oh. <laughs> Somehow worse. Moving on. All right, I'll do the next okay, one. Okay, go. We're Baby Steps millionaires. Of course we're buying Teslas in cash. <laughs> have you ever hated yourself more after saying that? You said it, not me. I should have let you have that one. I know, that's a but good one. But this one is true. Would you um, pay We pay cash cars? for all of our cars. Yes, this is yes. not like a Tesla flex, because truthfully... There's some like Kia Tellurides that cost way more. So it's not like a real thing in today's world, right? Those, those are some bougie cars these days. I'm telling you. So let's talk about buying a car in cash. When to buy used, when to buy brand new if you're a Baby Steps millionaire. What yeah. are your thoughts I mean, on this? Yeah, when we say when your net worth is a million dollars, you can financially take the hit of a new car. Because the truth is, when you have a new car, I saw this on Instagram from you the other day, George. Thank you yeah. for following me on Instagram. I thought you blocked me. <laughs> <laughs> But you talked about, yeah, a new car. I'm like, and how it loses money 15 minutes, right, after you drive yes. it off a lot. One year, two years, and you just watch it depreciate. It's like 60% in five so, years yeah, it's of a, a new car. It's, it's a car. So I'm like, it's not, if you can't take that financial hit, don't do it. It's unnecessary. Yeah. So well, if you have use. debt on that car, number one, you paid yeah. 40 grand. Well, you paid 50 grand after interest over a few years. And now it's worth, and now it's worth well, 16 grand. That's right. That hurts my soul. And it's one reason. And Rachel, you've been taking calls on the Ramsey show alongside me. People are underwater on their cars like never before. Oh, They're calling us going, well, Rachel, the car's only worth 20, but I owe 35. And, what do I do? And so much on this past, like after COVID, George, how much the prices just yes. skyrocketed, you guys. And people still got in. And they took out debt. And With now, high interest? Yes. High, just hurting their ability to pay it down? All of it, yeah. It's, it's really, still tanking in value. So, so cars, you guys, please, out of any debt, don't do it. Yeah. And if, I don't Financially care if speaking, you have— Financially speaking, just mathematically. Even 0% interest, like people like to argue all the time about, well, it's not, it doesn't make sense, Rachel, to pay off my car when I have low interest and I no, can make more— it's depreciating ass. Yeah. We, let's talk mortgage. Like, we could talk other things to actually get in, like, an intellectual debate. Cars is just not. No. It's not. It's I a made depreciating a, asset. You on my can't. YouTube channel, one of the top videos I've ever done is how car loans are America's number one wealth killer. I, You're literally driving your retirement yeah, in these it's, things. It's terrible. It's so true. And now the payments. We get payments now. 1200 Thirteen hundred oh a my month. Gosh, I mean, it like it's my soul. crazy, you guys. It's crazy. Yeah, so. and the car dealerships they make their money off the financing, which yes. is why if I walk in with cash now, they're like, "Well, you're not going to get the thousand yeah, off." They're because not as not, like happy with you. They're making all this money off financing, and That's they're screwing right. you over. All right, next, uh, we're baby steps millionaires. Of course, we're besties with our investment pro. <laughs> Shout out to Drew and Ryan. <gasps> I'm a Drew. Same Drew. Yes, Drew M. But I'm a Ryan. What does that mean? I got Ryan. I got Connor. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Great guys. All right. They're all they're all at the same firm, if you will. Anyways. Drew texted me the other day. Having, okay. He read my book. He, Did he read your book? He was a groomsman at my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate True flex. story. <laughs> True story. You know you're a baby steps millionaire when, Are you're, you ready for this when your financial advisor I is a groomsman. I him and his wife on a blind date. <gasps> <laughs> Cheers to that. Rachel wins. I did. Matchmaker. <laughs> you win. That's actually a beautiful story for another day. Another day, but I did. My you should only start an elite one. matchmaking service, by <gasps> the way. I actually feel like I'm pretty good at it. I feel it. like you have great judgment. I mean, That's fair. hashtag Winston Cruz. Okay, all of this literally happens to be a coincidence that we know our investment pro that, <laughs> that well. Yes. You don't really have to. Truly a full coincidence. But the point is that you know somebody that's an investment professional to sit down and look at your entire portfolio because it's not just your investments. I mean, they are looking at taxes. They're Estate looking at planning, yeah, I mean, strategy, every, charitable yes. giving, I mean, especially as you everything. build some real wealth. It's big. It's big. So having someone in your corner that knows this stuff, you guys, I, I think it's great. And what I love about financial advisors and investment pros, they can catch our blind spots. They can catch holes in our financial plan and help us fill those gaps and help us build wealth with more confidence. So yep. I highly recommend you can jump on RamseySolutions.com and get connected with ones that we, pr we trust out yep. there. Love it. All right, Rachel, ready for the last one? Yep. We're Baby Steps Millionaires. Of course, we're going to buy queen beds for our kids that they can, <laughs> quote, use until they graduate. <laughs> 
<laughs> this one is hashtag not relatable, but true for you and your family. Charles. Sorry. It was a good deal on the queen mattress. And he's going to have his only graduate. We don't know that. <laughs> what if he decides to upgrade to a king? No. Then he'll have to spend his own money. He'll have it. He might. I don't know if he works hard. Sweet and that's what he chooses Charles. to spend his money on. <laughs> Clearly, the man desires I'm going to say, did Uncle George talk you into this? I'm nervous. Like, if he slept on a full-size bed, would he just roll off? I don't think so. <laughs> the fact that he's never been in a full-size bed, he's that is twin, true luxury. He's been in twin beds before. Like, no, he's fine. He's fine. But you have to think about it. <laughs> That's a fun one. That is a fun oh, one. But truly, so good, y'all. That, oh that's, a, that's one of the small luxuries you get to have when you follow a plan to build wealth <laughs> with no debt. You can just go get the queen bed. He'll use it longer. Yeah. I mean, there's things you can do to upgrade. And yeah, it's fine. That's okay. What's recently. your last little guilty pleasure? I'm a baby step millionaire. Of course, I'm going to blank. I'll do nails. Oh, that's I'll a good always one. I'll my nails done. Mm-hmm. Broke a nail. That was sad. Oh no! Should yeah, we go? It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? What's your What's your splurge? Oh my gosh! I think uh, you know. For me, it would be I'm a baby steps millionaire. Of course, I'm gonna spring the extra dollar for the oat milk to avoid tummy issues. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> or the gluten free crust at Papa John's. <laughs> Y'all, that that is true. The gluten free upcharge kills my soul because, like, hey, how about we make the crust worse and smaller, I and know. you pay four dollars more? It and I'm like, so okay. True. It is so true, George. That's it is me so every true. time I get pizza. That's oh, fun. man. All right. Well, that's the most fun I'm, you can have legally. For I'm glad free. that we, uh, yeah, the of course we. That was a good trend. It was a good trend. And I hope Probably it inspired in people out there to, to live like no one else, as we say. And that means sacrifice now so you can have options and margin and freedom later on. That's what this is all about. Amen. That's right. Don't let your money be the one to control you. You control your money. So You're in the driver's seat. That's what we seat. want for you. Control what you can control. All right, George, it's almost the end of the episode, and we finish every episode with Guilty, guilty as, as charged. charged. And this is where our producer, Skylar, gives us a new Guilty as Charged question every week. And if we are guilty, we take a sip. Skylar? Have you ever regretted an online purchase influenced by your social feed? Oh. Yes. Cheers. Okay, what, what's the purchase? Tell us mm. more details. I'll never tell. Man. <laughs> and it's a brand. And I hate to bash brands because I just know there's humans working behind the scenes to make brands great. I mean, you don't like a brand that just do feel, it's like, ba- like you didn't bashing, like leave a bad review bashing though. Bashing a book, you know, and you're like, man, there's an author that wrote this though. Like I just, I just do feel bad. Uh, my pants. I, and I did this kind of on a whim. I was cooking one night because if I find things that are good deal, I like to share it, especially on Instagram with people. So we were cooking and there's a pan from Amazon uh, like a 12 inch frying pan and we used it. It's our go-to. Like, our, like literally we grab that because it's easier to clean. It, like, it's just, it's no. the, it's the best pan. So I mentioned it and I did say like, and I didn't say the brands on the Instagram store. I just said, we bought these pans and I did show it because they're blue. And I was like, and I said, it may have been your user error, but after about five months, all that silkiness that they show of how easy it is was gone. It tarnished. And it burned Ugh. the bottom and you can't clean it. It was terrible. And Skylar, I got more messages of people saying it happened to them too. <gasps> I know. I have our place and I really like it. I'm it's telling you, one. there's some like, a good it's a stoneware from Amazon and we have a small frying pan that we do our fried eggs yeah. and, a ma- and a big one that I do all my cooking on. It's wow, Amazon. we wow. just went full QVC and I'm hooked. <laughs> <laughs> like, tell me more, I sis. I know, and again, I hate to bash a brand, but it's just the truth from my own experience. I love and to again, bash a brand. Yeah, what is, what's here yeah, go, bash, George. George. My <laughs> recent uh, influence purchase was from TikTok. I've never made a purchase from TikTok. <laughs> and I don't know if you've noticed, but TikTok has become all ads for TikTok shop. And I bought drawer organizers because <laughs> oh, I finally I went like through it. yeah, it's good. and I was like, you know what would fix my my problems as a person? Organizers in the drawer. We could debate this. I agree, George. It does really help. So what happened? So do I regret it? <gasps> I think it's a fine product, but I realized after <laughs> buying it that this is a mean, like I could get this product anywhere. Probably cheaper. Like the oh, container yeah. store or something. Yeah. Although container store would probably charge double. You know what I mean? But like Amazon, all those places, I don't know, just going to Target and getting some drawer, Walmart. Yeah. So I do feel like I got swindled a little bit by the good marketing of some TikTok influencer who's like, 
do you have a junk drawer and you wish it wasn't junk? It was just a drawer. <laughs> Get my containers. It's great. We love to contain. And so that's what I bought. And uh, I don't regret the actual, it's plastic. Like, how could it go wrong? And I do, I open my drawer for fun now just to go. Hey. I'm going to say yeah. that. I'm kind of a- like Joey from Friends. I'm like, how you doing? How you, know? you doing? How you that, doing? That might be worth it then. I don't know if. I, I know, know. I don't think that's a regret. I just regret yeah. as someone who's frugal to be like, I could have done better on the price uh, the for price. something as cheap as just it. plastic bins. Thing. You could have got the promo code. I will say, I did this for my uh, makeup drawer, and it is so true. If you have a place for ever, like your blo- like what you need, mm-hmm. you don't junk it up. Like it, every everything has its place. I swear by them. I really do. And I'm not an organized person. Like you know this. We know. You see my car. It's not good. Nightmare. But if you can open a drawer and there's organizers, I will be good at putting it back where it should be. And it. I'm, I think, go- I'm going I literally on a solid think I five sleep better at it. night because the drawer next to me is happy yeah, and calm. Something. Oh no! See, my nightstand is. <laughs> it's a nightmare. <laughs> it's a nightmare. That nightstand. That was okay. fun, George. Um, who finished their drink? Me. I think you. Yeah, you got there. I really liked it. Here's what's in it. Fresh blackberries, fresh rosemary, agave nectar, ginger beer, and lime juice. What'd you think? What's the rating? I mean, I think I'm going to go 10 out of 10, George. I agree. I'm going to give it. It is delicious. It's a rare to give a mocktail 10 out of 10. And it's The crew really, who made it is elated back there. I mean, y'all, is, it was really good. <laughs> it's hard to do. And for those that don't drink, they it's still want to enjoy a fun It tastes like drink. a great cocktail. Yeah. It really does. The cost comes down to one ninety nine <gasps> per glass. So good. It has fresh blackberries, fresh rosemary, agave nectar. There's this some is love bougie. to it. There's some love to it. This will impress your friends. Yeah, it's really if good. If you have friends. So find the recipe in the show notes. Give it a try this weekend. It will not disappoint. (laughs) All right, it's closing time. Thanks, you guys, always, for listening and watching these episodes. If you want to leave a comment, let us know what you think. Share it with your friends and your family and subscribe. We love all the loyal Smart Money Happy Hour listeners. George, I um, I was at Disney last month, and I was getting on a ride, the Barnstormer. And I had a sweet lady who was getting on before me. I was in line. She yelled down, Rachel! I love you and George on Smart Money Happy Hour. That's so Thank sweet. You. And she gets just on yelling the ride across and Disney at some stranger. And I just thought, that's so fantastic. So wow. we appreciate you guys, and we'll see you next Thursday on an all new episode of Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Hour.